What's up guys, Joe at Momentum Works. Today we're talking about charge air coolers or CICs or radiators that take air or whatever you call them. Stay tuned. All right guys, so today's topic is charge air coolers. And I know charge air coolers aren't quite as sexy as turbochargers, but they are damn well just as important. And I'm here to tell you why. First and foremost, charge air cooler sits in between your turbo and your intake manifold. So the only way that all that sweet, precious boost is getting into your motor is through the charge air cooler. So it's very important that you have a functioning charge air cooler that's not allowing boost leaks and that's actually cooling the air before it enters your motor. Let's dive in and look at the parts of a charge air cooler and what exactly they do. So what we're looking at here is a charge air cooler core for a late model Peterbilt or Kenworth. I don't know off the top of my head. I have the links to all these in the descriptions below. Uh, let's kind of go over what is on this charge air cooler. So for every charge air cooler, you have your core, which is the center section, and then you have your end tanks on each side that basically encapsulate everything and keep the air inside. So on the end tanks, I'm gonna grab the camera here. This here would be the inlet coming from your turbo. So your turbo would be over here and you'd have a pipe connecting it to this inlet. So all the air is coming into this end tank and from the end tank, the air is gonna then go through the core of the charge air cooler. And now let's do our best here to kind of really zoom in. You can see there's bar and plate. And guys, I'm gonna do my best here. Um, so basically, the air runs through these channels, the air, your boost pressure that's in the charge air cooler, and then ambient air is running through this section to cool the air. So your turbo makes boost, comes into the end here, and it starts running across these channels. And while you're going down the road, because this whole apparatus is mounted on the front of your engine, air is coming through this ventilated part and cooling the air before it gets to the other end tank there where it's collected. And then it has an outlet on the other side, just like, I oh, as I zoomed in, you probably couldn't tell. This outlet here has a pipe that would then go to your intake manifold. And this is just something holding it up, guys. So why do we care? Well, the cooler your exhaust, or your, the cooler your boost air is, the more volume you can fit in it. And let's jump to the chair here and kind of go over what exactly that means. So a lot of people are going to say, you know, why would you want the, the charged air, the boost, to be cold? Well, when you think about boost, a lot of people just think about PSI. They only think about pressure. They don't think about volume. And this is such a flawed way of thinking because think about a garden hose versus a pressure washer. You know, a pressure washer might be at 3,000 PSI and a garden hose is at 10. But which one moves more water? The garden hose. Well, the turbo, you have to think about it the same way. You want to think about pressure and volume. And you don't need an intercooler to raise your boost pressure. But the intercooler, what it does by cooling the air is it allows you to move more volume. Now, how is this so? Well, it's very simple. Cold air is more dense. So think about when you jump into a really cold pool and your balls shrivel up. They get real small. Well, basically, the charge air cooler is like the pool shriveling up your balls. But by shriveling up the air, you're able to fit more air molecules into the motor. So you're flowing more air at that point at the same PSI, which results in more power. So cooler air, more power. So the whole idea of a charge air cooler is to be able to fit more air into the engine by cooling it so that the molecules are tighter packed. So how do the charge air coolers get damaged? Well, first and foremost, it's on the front of the truck. So as you're running the truck down the road, you know, as the debris and things kick up, you can damage the intercooler or the charge air cooler or the CAC, whatever you want to call it. And at that point, you're going to start losing pressure because if there's a hole in that charge air cooler core, you're losing pressure. So now your turbo has to work harder to make more boost pressure than to have the air cooled off and enter the intake manifold. So it's very important to have a charge air cooler that one, holds boost pressure, obviously, and two, is actually cooling. So if you've got debris or shit or your fins are all bent up, that charge air cooler is not functioning the way it's supposed to. So your charged air is then going to be more warm or you're either losing charged air because there's a hole in it. So you're not getting efficiency. So even if you're not a hot rod performance guy, it's important to have a good working charge air cooler because you might be losing the fuel economy if it's not functioning correctly. 
So while Radiator will leak and make it very easy to notice that it has a leak because you'll see blue or green coolant, with a charge air cooler, it's kind of more difficult to know when it's leaking and when it's time to replace unless it has huge visible damage. One way to test a charge air cooler for a leak is to take off your hoses on each end, and we have caps on ours right now. You would take these off, block them off, and you could uh, basically you can make your own kit with a Schrader valve to blow this up with air to see if it has air. Or we also sell a kit for this. Basically, it pressurizes the charge air cooler system. And if you don't hold pressure, then you know there's a leak somewhere. Or if it holds pressure, you know there is. Another way you could possibly do this is with soapy water, spraying it around the cooler looking for leaks. But this is a little bit more difficult. So look, guys, when you're upgrading that turbo, you're upgrading those injectors, you're putting a bigger cam in there. Make sure you got a decent charge air cooler on the truck because that's the, like the last step before that air hits the intake manifold. It's cooling the air and it's making sure that you have charge there that's hitting that intake manifold. You could have the biggest and baddest turbo in the world, but if you're losing boost pressure or if you're not cooling the air before it enters the intake manifold, you're just wasting time. You're wasting energy and you're wasting money. So guys, if you need a charge air cooler, we're no stocking Northern Radiators charge air coolers. We cover all the late model Peterbilts and Kenworths and the older stuff too. Basically, if you've got a Caterpillar, I've got a charge air cooler for you. So whether you get it from us or anybody else, it's just so important. And I think it's so often overlooked the charge air cooler and what its functionality does. So guys, I hope this video is informative. If you need a charge air cooler, give us a shot. If you want us to go more in depth about what charge air coolers do, because this was kind of just a quick, you know, 30,000 foot overview. Happy to do it. Guys, thanks for watching. Take care. See you later.